take your driving lesson now at dla-driving.co.uk. Hello and welcome to Owen the Town. I'm Luke Gregory and here's what's coming up today. It's another fantastic win and a fantastic performance at Kenilworth Road as Luton beat West Bromwich Albion 2-0 to climb above them in the league table and to keep our playoff dreams alive. Today we'll be discussing that game. Is the playoffs a reality? Can we start to really believe in this dream that we all have of finishing in the top six of the championship and fighting for a place in the Premier League? It makes it exciting. Why not? We'll discuss that today. And also, Jed Steer come in for his home start, his uh, league debut for Luton against West Bromwich Albion. And uh, I thought he did pretty well. So today, we thought we'd have a little discussion about Jed Steer, what you made of him. We've also got Instagram questions and plenty more to get through with Stoke on Wednesday as well. Um, but what a win tonight, uh, the other night. And boys, Otaro, Dave, it just, again, another special day kind of road. Oh yeah, sorry, Mike's got to go up. Look, I'm tired. I'm, no, tired, I'm not having sure. any excuses today. Good evening, by the way. Um, no excuses, sir. No excuses. Sorry, a big win though. It was a fantastic Huge. win, and it was it was a fantastic win. Just shows you again how far we've come. Um, that we go and we and we actually put in a good shift second half, definitely. That's um, it, keep the we might have rode, we might have rode our luck at, at, the, at the very you know in the first half, but well deserved win, well deserved win, and, and the players work hard for it. And let's face it, I don't think West Brom offered that much either. I think we just shut them down very well. And that was basically the whole point of the game, wasn't it? Yeah. We shut them down. I think we did really well that. And we'll get into it in a sec with some three-word reviews first. Mike says, Fortress Kenilworth Road. John, playoffs possible. Uh, Kilty says, what a team. Connor, Jerome's experience key. Mark says, Pelly was immense. Helen says, don't underestimate us. Uh, Lewis says, Steve, Bruce, Beaton, Paul... The, the Lanark Shear Kante. I must have said that right, haven't I? Good luck. Lanark Shearer. Lanark, Lanark, is it? Lanark Shearer. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Give up. We'll go with that. Uh, yeah. Thomas that's, says, that's safe from relegation. And Anthony says, Alan Campbell show. Um, <laughs> Alan, well, yeah, Alan Campbell show. And he was great, wasn't he, Alan Campbell? Phenomenal. I think, well, I know Paddy got a man in the match and he, he was brilliant. I think that a lot of players are brilliant, but for me, Campbell, best player in the park. And also... Here, Jerome's experience key. We did not think we'd be saying that, did we? About a month or so back. No, is it? And Cameron Jerome seems to have turned a bit of a corner, hasn't it? I don't know if it is because he was lacking match minutes, maybe in the first half of the season. But he's really, in recent weeks, shown how important he is to the team. And I think once again, Nathan Jones probably been saying this all season, and a few of us have probably gone. Mm-hmm. You know, is he up to this level? But He's shown in recent weeks that he, he is, and he is a valuable member to the to the starting eleven at the moment. He was a good target man Saturday too. Yeah, he held the ball well. He ran the ball well, uh, and, and I know we're going to talk about it in a minute, but he scored a great header. So you know, yeah, he's a good guy, and he's uh, sponsored by DLA Driving School. Well, he's going to throw that one in there, Dave. Right. Oh, <laughs> there. there we go. Uh, John that. says playoffs possible, and look, the playoffs are one hundred percent possible at the moment. You look at that league table and how how compact it is all around that top six, and. Look, we've been talking about this for a few weeks and can we dream of playoffs and all this? And you just you just got to say, like, why not? If it makes going to games even more fun at the moment, like, it's always... Exactly, a, why not? It's always a possibility. Always a possibility, Always a possibility. There's teams, you know, that are a long way below us at the moment. Well, in my respect, but... And they've got, you know, a team that's worth maybe 10, 15 times more than what our squad's worth, but it doesn't matter this season. It doesn't matter... Many see. Look at Barzi last season. It doesn't matter. We keep going back to the same thing, but it does not matter. And I tell you what, we'll be up there in the season. Like I said, I keep saying it all season. We can beat anyone, so let's just go for it, eh? Two points off the playoffs right now. Yeah, let's go for it. And uh, dare I dream it? Ten mm. points. You do. Well, yeah. You do have to say <laughs> that the next I'll few. That as well. I didn't want to say, but cheers, though. Yeah. <laughs> the I'm next, the next few league fixtures we have are going to be key in in this push or if we want to be finishing in the playoffs. And I know like 
me saying that is just crazy because we're never expected to finish in the playoffs. But whilst we're there and we're mm-hmm. dreaming, look, there's a long. We way can't to go. deny them the next three yeah, games exactly. are key at the end of the day. But and there's the a long players, way to go, though. There's there is a long way. Well, to go. don't you think the players have that ambition because they certainly, obviously, do. Well, yeah, and it's like Nathan, they, know, they know what their targets are. Nathan Jones says at the start of the season that. You know, we we will give them the target of playoffs. Why not dream big? And these players, like you said, will have ambition. These players will want to play in the Premier League, if not with Luton, with another club. Adebayo will, Campbell will. And you think, why not? Like, if and I know we just keep saying, what, but why not? Let's just let's just get a little bit excited and just see how the next few games go. I'm, I'm already excited. So it doesn't matter, actually matter. So, um, yeah, I'm up for it already. Well, let's talk about the game. And Luton two West Brom nil is a brilliant win. Uh, we now leapfrog West Brom. They come into this game without scoring a goal in four games. Yeah. So I was sitting there thinking, well, it's a perfect time to play Luton because we normally, when we play a team and with that record, we normally just... Yeah, I was about to say, we give up. You give up, fucking, up didn't we? Give up. And I think we tried to, didn't we? We tried to in that first half and we'll get into them moments mm. in a sec. We had four changes from the Birmingham loss. Steer come in, Osho, Musgrave and Jerome came in for Cornick, Lansbury, Burke and Shea. I was quite surprised to see Steer instead of Shea. What, what were your guys' reactions on that? Well, like I said, shocked. We were very surprised, weren't we, really? Um, I don't think any player, uh, sorry, any fan, sorry, in the stadium at the time when the team was announced or wherever they were could say they weren't shocked because Shea's had a great sort of last hour of the games, hasn't he? Really? He's done nothing wrong, has he, Shea? Um, no. nothing, nothing that you want to drop him for, but then there may be other reasons. Just maybe other reasons. That's all I'm thinking because I don't think it's form. What does Steer offer better than Shea? Obviously, Nathan saw... Steer was better for the job that day. But like he also said as well in his post-match interview, he also turned around and said, he, we brought him in to play games. He's not just going to sit on the bench, which, well, right, you can understand that because apparently he's got a good sort of pedigree about him. So so how does that make how does that make Shea sit there and feel? I, what's he got to do to, to claim that permanent jersey? I was going to say, what do you reckon what's Shea's he got to do? feeling like? Because Sluga goes and he's probably thinking, all right, I've got a bit of a, you know, I've been so patient for the last two or three seasons to be, on that sub bench and wait mm-hmm. for my chance. And then he's got it when sluga has gone. Steers come in, played that Cambridge game. Didn't have a lot to do. He pulled off one good save that day. And now he's just been thrown straight into an important home game. But it, Shea must be sitting there thinking, what what's, what have I got to do? Or maybe, maybe he knows. Maybe he just well, knows the situation. I'm sure he knows the situation. Yeah. So at the end of the game as well, right? Obviously, where we were sitting, you can see obviously him coming over towards and whatever else. And Jez Steer walking back towards the halfway line. And he got a nice greeting from uh, Shea. Nice That's little handshake me, and yeah. all smiles. It was it was positive, do you know what I mean? It was very, very positive to see. But we've been saying that all season. The team is so mm-hmm. together. This they look it, out yeah. for that. They are so together and it's nice to, to be part of it at the moment. It's um, one union, isn't they? Yeah. Well, we did try and give West Brom the goal they've been looking for for the last four games when Naismith tried this lovely little right-footed ball across the... Good gracious. What's the face of her own goal? Straight to Colin Grant. He's, he's <laughs> chipped it onto the crossbar. And look, at th- this time, you said you're having to ride our luck. We, we certainly had to ride our luck there because... We gave him, we gave him that opportunity. There's, there's no way that that guy shouldn't have scored. He should have scored. No, I don't know why he's gone for the lob there. Do you reckon the lob's I think he, a bad choice? The, well, he was being... I think the goalkeeper rushed out at him. And he tried to chip it over him. The thing as well, he, reaction, I suppose, wasn't it? he gets onto was. that rebound as well first. So it hits the yeah. bar, it comes straight back out to him and he's like miskicked it. Yeah, he didn't, and it, yeah, we he, definitely rode our He like weren't there. judging it, was he? He weren't anticipating no. the ball coming back off the bar. I think he thought he'd scored. But, but that yeah. wasn't the only <laughs> chance we gave him. It wasn't the only chance. And it was no. at that point I'm thinking, here we go. This is, this is true to Luton Town's form. We will give him a goal. Mm-hmm. And I think I said to you at the weekend, you know, if we carry on like this, we, we're not, we're not going to win. And I've said on so many podcasts before about conceding goals, let's just concede. Good ones. Good yeah, ones. Sure. That would have been the pure definition of my point yeah. of let's not concede crappy goals that, but look, we didn't concede. Um, they had that other chance as well with, with Steer's goal kick, which kind of didn't get enough height on it. And it's yeah. come straight back out. And he's mm. just about parried it wide. I know he Is that the one that, hold what, it, but the one that went under his body and yeah, yeah out you for know, a corner. But again, for me, you know, you could say that that could have been a Sluga mistake. The way that yeah. squirmed underneath him, the kick out was sad and poor. But you know, everybody, everyone has has a, a mistake to make occasionally, don't they? Just it's it's just a bit worse and when it's yeah. your goalkeeper and making thankfully mistakes. Thankfully, for just yeah. is and obviously purpose, it was uh, that mistake was done early. And, and I thought after that he made some good saves. So, yeah. but I think if you, if you're watching, if you watch the highlights back, um, 
West Brom were peppering our goal all the time. All the time. Yeah, maybe That's what slightly, it felt like. Yeah, but That's what it felt like. At the same like. time, I don't think they ever did anything to hurt us, really, did they? I think, I think it, uh, our keeper was, you know, in charge of it after he made those couple of errors. But they were creating a little bit more than we were at that point. And, and there was a bit like goal mouth scrambles all the time, I thought. You know, a couple of those ones where the ball was pinging around in the area and you're just thinking, just put your foot through it and get it away. Yeah, I know what you're saying. But I felt, obviously, from obviously my point of view, I felt, look, we were giving them those opportunities. It weren't they, like they were, they were creating those opportunities. We were well, they basically weren't, gifting them. I give, I give you that. We did gift them by, by our, the way that we were defending. However... I'm grateful they didn't take them. Yeah, and I mean players like you know Andy Carroll, your Carl and Grants, and they, they can't take them sh- those chances. But it's great, isn't it? It's like, how much are you worth in the past? Those two, how much are they worth? Loads. Thirty-five million record transfer fee, and what about six million pound? Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Can't even finish that. It was a, a good half, though, and like you said, West Brom maybe did have a fair their fair share of efforts in that first half, but. There wasn't anything like clear cut from what I can remember. Maybe the one that was off the line, which from Osho, I think would have been the closest they potentially come to, to score. Well, obviously the one off the bar as well, but I don't know. It's hard to tell on the, yeah, on the TV. I but can tell. It's like, I know what you're saying though. It was a chance, wasn't it? Yeah, but I feel like they were all half chance. I don't think mm. like they really like carved us open or anything or, you know, got down the, the wings and... It was a bit. Nah, it was it. a bit. Uh, uh, this is going to sound terrible. A bit like Sunday league, and it was all popping around in in the box, and they were trying to, you know, whack it at the goal. And well, you know, it's Andy Carroll, isn't it? We've got yeah. to do is loft it in the box every single time. We, I think we had the best chance in the first half. Yeah, we didn't even talk about that. The the ball which um, Campbell plays in Jerome was unreal, and what a run yeah. by Campbell as well. And Nathan Jones said the other day with Alan Campbell that he does like to carry the ball, and he's becoming a very good ball carrier and to take that from our basically our own penalty area halfway up the pitch and then play that beautiful ball into Jerome and he's so unlucky to hit the post there because that could have gone anywhere but once again Alan Campbell really strong showing us what really he's, what really he's, strong run really strong run I don't know many players he beat but a really strong run he's, he's showing got, more to his game now as well he's exactly what right. we want to see yeah, from him brilliant. isn't it and you're right the pass was weighted perfectly and you know albeit I mean how many times we sat here on a Monday going Oh, you know, he's fantastic off the ball, which he is. And that's good to say. Good to sit here and say, do you know what? On the ball, he's brilliant. It's ball carrying, like, yeah. you know, well, Nathan Jones. I think Nathan, Nathan Jones said against, I don't know who it was against, it was about six weeks ago. So he turned around and said about Campbell, and he went, Campbell's not the greatest strike of a ball. And he fucking come up with that goal as well. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Unreal. Should we talk about the first goal? Um, free kick in from the left hand side. Bell was fouled on the left. Naismith takes it. It's a beautiful free kick from Naismith and you can expect this from Kyle, can't you, with that, with that wand of a left foot. Yeah. And Jerome's just about beating Adebayo in the air and, and slammed the header in and it's it's a brilliant header. It's a brilliant free kick. You're well, not stopping the header. You're not stopping the header. It was, it was a real forceful mm. one. Um, it's nice to score a goal like that. That gives me proper like Kevin Nichols, Steve Howard vibes from 2004-05. Yeah, right. So. Free kick in, power header, goal. Yeah, rightly so. But... Um, You've got to question the West Brom defence. I mean, I'm, I'm glad they weren't there, but um, he was all on his own. He was, I mean, if you look it back as well, Adebayo's on his own yeah, as well, and so he goes on to header and he's just, just passed it, but yeah. luckily he didn't get any contact and so left you have to question him. you have to question the West Brom defence. However, it was a smashing header, and he deserved it for his performance on the day. He deserved that goal. And he deserved yeah, that from um, his performances um, in recent weeks. The one against Swansea, he was unreal. And the one against uh, Bournemouth, which yeah. was he had that goal disallowed, which was gutting for him. But he's deserved deserved this goal. In all fairness to Cameron Jerome, he has rolled back the years, hasn't he, recently? He has been fantastic. And you can't even take it away from him. We can sit here and say, OK, he weren't really on the, on the ball. But if you look at it, he's got a few assists as well. Even previous to the last couple of weeks or so. But he's, yeah, he's starting to... I say, we know what he's about anyway, but he's starting to show that he can still do it at this level and that's great to yeah. see. And that's what we need because we were sitting here back in January about a transfer window saying, do we need another striker? Have we got enough depth up top? At the moment, yes, we have. Yeah, so you probably would good. say we have. Yeah. And uh, Nathan Joe said in his post-match the other day, they felt that this game was more suited for Cameron Jerome instead of someone like Harry Cornick. And it's nice then that he says that he can give Cornick a rest. Jerome can come in and play the way that we needed to play yeah. to beat West Brom and deal with because mm. you said Dave the other day how tall 
their squad is and they've got yeah, Kyle yeah. Bartley who's what like six foot they've yeah. got Andy Carroll who's six foot they've got some tall players in their, in their team well, and on their, on, on, when they were defending and I, I looked across and thinking my god you know that they're out yeah, you know they're enough. one foot taller than all our players you know and it was it was like we didn't have that it's nice to have Jerome in that position it's it's true. in the front and, and, and he was yeah. a good target man Saturday he was a really good target man and he, but he works really hard his first Great. touch as well was brilliant yeah right? You know, and you know, then you go. You, you you might have questioned him coming to the club in the first place, but now he's he's making his mark, and that's fantastic. And if he does leave, and you know, end of the season, and obviously he's, he's made his contributions now, and whatever else, and if we, if we make the playoffs, sorry, he will um, go down as a very key player. If we make the playoffs, I'm not when? saying we're gonna, but it will go down as key player. I think everyone he, goes down as a key player if we make the playoffs. When we make playoffs, well, yeah, that's it. But he has <laughs> been key to some goals. I mean, Blackburn away, the assist for Berry. I mean, obviously. The goal on Saturday, the assist against Barnsley, I think it was a bell. Like just things like that. You look at those mm. they're vital points, and they've come from Cameron Jerome's assistance, so to speak. Um, let's talk about the goal that made it two 0 Campbell, given a lot of space, he drove into it and blasted a shot uh, past the keeper, and it went in. It was lucky he did go in because he had mm. Adebayo and Bree screaming for the ball on the right hand side. They were also free. Uh, he just ignored them and put it in top ends, basically, or middle of the goal. Great strike. Yeah, but it was coming at an angle, didn't it? Yeah. Let's face it. To beat, it uh, moved. The ball moved like, real To beat Johnson lot. from there, it's got to be a good strike, in it? Because he's a good keeper. So. It was the power. I mean, that was through that mm. goalkeeper before he had a chance to see it. It was literally hitting the back of the net before the bloody goalkeeper had a chance to dive, really, if you think about it. So, yeah, he he it just sharp. hit it so hard. And it swerved. It swerved so much. It changed direction and it was great. It was a it was smash and see. And on the ball, when he cut across, I'm thinking, oh, he's going to shoot here. We was all wanting him to shoot. Mm-hmm. On that point, we was way on top of them. And, you know, and it was a fantastic goal. And that's a player high on confidence doing that as well. Let's face it. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and he goal. scored quite high a few recently as well. Confidence. The one at Reading, the one against Bournemouth, the one now. He's got a few goals in I don't think he scored many um, upper in Scotland. I don't think he scored many goals, but I think, you know, with the right coaching, we'll get loads more. I think he averaged out about three goals a season in Scotland. But look, if he can score or assist or just, just be Alan Campbell, we'll take that because he's brilliant all around, isn't he? Let's face it. And yeah, like I said, he's I starting said to show now more what he's got. He is, and he is becoming like Nathan Jones. He's, yeah. he's starting to become a fan favourite and we're turning up now and we, we're we expecting... We, we, I think we're just understanding him a bit more now, aren't we? Mm. We're understanding the way he's playing and maybe in the first 15, 20 games of the season... You were watching the game. He didn't quite understand what his role was or his job was. But now yeah. you can kind of see it in games where he's picking up the ball from deep. He's driving. He's playing perfect balls. He's adding goals to his game now. It just seems he's. It seems like he's settled a bit. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. not and he's a well. workhorse. He, yeah, in all fairness, let's not forget as well. He missed quite a bit of the season as well. That injury. Oh yeah. Well, actually, no. So. Did he? It was about three. Yeah, three or four games, wasn't it? it was not. Well, a fair amount. Surprisingly, only that much. But, but yeah, look, he wasn't he always in the starting eleven either, was he? So. And now he, you, we would say, you sit down and go, hang on a minute, well, Alan Campbell has to start. If he doesn't start, you would be sitting there going, why isn't he starting? The first question raised. Yeah. But there, yeah, it's, it's brilliant to see. Um, Andy Carroll hit the crossbar at the end of the game. Don't know how it stayed out, but are you of that? And I haven't seen it back, but... Because it hit the, the wood, it hit the bar. Yeah, it was just... That's why it didn't mate. go in. Well, yeah. I don't know how he didn't score it, to be honest. That's the kind of... <laughs> If you see that, if you slow it down on a picture or whatever, you said, oh, it's Andy Carroll going to score this, you probably bet your probably say, yeah. say, yeah, you, you definitely. Were you um, impressed with how we dealt with Andy Carroll the other day? Because I know how much you love him because nah. you're like, you know, you've styled your hair after him and oh, all this. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Uh, but were you impressed with how we dealt with him? Mate, I thought, it, we put down a number on him, didn't we? Let's face it. I mean, Lockyer was getting under his skin the whole game as well. I think it was, was it Osho and Lockyer just double... I'm about to say tag teaming in them, but you know what I'm saying? Those sort of things, do you? But no, they were doubling up on him as such. As such. But yes, we handled him. I'm impressed. And I think we handled the whole front line in the second half. I, mean, I, don't, I didn't really feel that we were threatened in the second half at all. I can't remember a point where I thought, oh crap, they're going to get back in this. The thing is, right, this is why I thought West Brom were really, really poor, right? Because I thought, especially in the first half, they were trying to go through Andy Carroll for everything. The ball was going straight into Andy Carroll like, for a flick or, you know what I mean? Just, and if it was going for him, he was dropping deep into midfield occasionally. Was all going, I'm thinking to myself, that's how shit they are tactically today. Well, the reason well, they we were... were great as well, but they were also shit tactically because they are trying to go for him the whole time. Like, Well, then you can only lay that at their manager. Well, yeah, but it's Steve Bruce, isn't it? Which exactly. Yeah. And what do you think from a Steve Bruce team is set up not yeah. to lose first? 
and then try and, uh, and try and you know scramble. Let's not take anything away from our performance. Though. No, I don't want to take anything away. But the, the West Brom, I think I said when we went to West Brom, I didn't think they were that good then, no. and I thought we had a chance to beat them when we were there. You know, and had it been for the horrific injury, you know, we got the extra goal. We, I reckon, we could have done it. Literally, we gave them goals in the first game. Well, yeah, so it, well, and we 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 didn't give them goals in this game. I th- I don't think they were a great team. This will make you laugh. Do you remember the beginning of the season? I turned around and said, I think West Brom are going to promote it this season. Yeah. Yeah, that'll make you laugh, won't it? There you go. <laughs> Can you have a laugh me? There you I go. Bet, I bet the stars while you were like, clip this and play it back at the end yeah, of the season. Yeah, see it, probably. Let's have a look. Fucking what an idiot. Uh, yeah. So yeah, 2 0, great win. Unbeaten in seven home games, producer Jacob's put here on our running order. It's the That's first nice. championship appearance for Steer since the playoff final in May 2019. That's stats yeah. from Mike Simmons at LTFC News. And Cameron Jerome's 81st goal in the championship. Sponsored by DLA Driving School. <laughs> uh, there we go again. Just um, chuck it we're, in we're on good form, are we? And that was, that, was his, that was his first home league game goal, wasn't it? Jerome today, uh, Saturday. His first uh, league, was it his first, first league, league goal, goal as well? Yeah, first league goal. There you go. Oh, yeah. But I'm beating in seven at home. We are on a bit of a roll at the moment. And it's, it's good to see, isn't it? And we've got some big home games coming up. Derby's going to be a tough game. Mm. They're on... Pretty They're good form in themselves, well. and you, know, you said they are scrapping and fired, and then QPR come into town, and well, that could be a bit. That's a Sunday at midday on Sky. Moment. They are all form at yeah, the moment. Take that. But QPR mm. seem to have been a bogey team since we've been mm. back up here. Well, we we're beating them. It's, yet, it's we? about time to put that to bed. Uh, we've got Stoke next, though, haven't we? We've got to break the hoodoo at some point, haven't we? Why not? You know, at the end of the day, you know, we we know we're good enough. We're on form. Bring them on. That's it. Let's just touch on the Stoke game before we move on to Jed Steer because it's we we see us I, I swear right we have three bogey teams in this league that we haven't beaten since we're back Cardiff Stoke and QPR just we haven't beaten any of them yet have we since we've been back no we haven't have we no and this is why I said earlier in the podcast the next three are huge because obviously we've got QPR and Derby and Stoke but if we can go to Stoke and not lose. That's a, that's a good result, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely fantastic result, not losing there. But, you know, again, if we get the game in right, we've got a good chance. And Nathan Jones obviously going to have the motivation of going there. And, the, the, yeah, and, and, and their, awesome their fans there, hate him now. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's, there's a bit of a grudge going on between them and him. So let's hope that, you know, we get in a fantastic away performance. Yeah, Why, can't we? Slot, Why can't I'm, we go I'm there and play well? Though. Why can't we go up there and play well? We're strong at the moment. We're on a good run. The players believe they can do it. Let's get them up there and, and get a result back. Do you think there's another game for Jerome and Adebay up front? Why not? I, mate, to be honest, why, I always say don't change something that's not broken. So, I think... Why? You wouldn't, surely you can't. I mean, look, you never know. Obviously, we change the team every week, but for me, it's got to be Cameron Jerome and Addy, but... Well, they they need to say, well. if you give them the service... You know, they'll, they'll have a good chance. So if we can get the ball and keep the ball for a bit. Yeah, in all fairness, you might strong see Musk come out and Cornick back in as well. So Yeah, strong midfield, hopefully. Well, hopefully it's a good game. Wednesday night on the Sky Red button, if you're interested in watching that one. Hopefully I've finished working time and get back and watch it. Uh, we wanted to focus down on Jed Steer. Producer Jacob texted me the other day and was like, we're going to talk about Jed Steer because it's his first championship start uh, for the club. So that's what we're going to do. What did you make of his home debut? And do you see him signing permanently in the summer? I was impressed with Jed Steer. What did you guys think? Well, I was a, I was a bit... Um, I, again, if we look at the two halves, the first half, I thought, oh my God, what have we got here? But then, you know, he was good at punching the ball away at corners. He was, he was trying to command his box a bit. So, you know, after those three or four errors, three errors, maybe, um, yeah, I thought he was quite strong. I thought he was quite strong. I, 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 you know, if he's going to hit the ball and punch it, and he did punch it quite away... That sort of thing. So I think he, he was quite good game, in the air, yeah. commanding his box a bit. But as we said earlier, he didn't have too many massive saves to make, no. did he? But what he had to do, when he had to do it, apart from the things we've already said, he did all right. Well, was, yeah, he definitely grew into the game. But let's, yeah. look, the conditions weren't the best either Saturday. So you got to, I mean, it's the first time he started since, when you say, 2019, was it? Yeah, playoff final. So look, that's a long time not to play. But how many, Football, can, so. can you sit there and go, uh, I mean, how many saves did he actually physically have to make that were, you know, class saves? One of them scrapping around, one kick away maybe. Um, one he scrambled around the post. 
the, the most dominant thing I mm. thought about him, apart from these crappy kicks, the one crappy kick, was he was good at getting out on those crosses and yes, punching them yeah. away. He handled yeah. it well a few yeah. times in the second half as well. I think the ball came in from a free kick or a corner. And at one point, it looked like he was off balance and he was swaying a little bit. He just caught the ball. I mean, everyone's gone for the ball and he just stood there and just gone. Yeah. So, I, I mean, he probably reads the game quite well as yeah, well. Yeah, that looked like a bit of experience that we might need, but... Yeah, it would be I mean, really interesting just to hear from someone professionally, like in the game, about or at Luton, why, mm. why he, what, or what something different he brings to James Shea, and is it something like the commanding the area or coming for crosses and getting punches on crosses? It, it's just interesting to. He seems like a character as well. In all fairness to him, well, we already said, didn't we? We already said that the back line of West Brom was quite. Tall the front line, sorry, quite you know they 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 quite a bit of the height in their team, yeah. To be honest, yeah. And so if you've got someone who's confident enough to get out there and stretch their arm up and punch that ball away every single time, then maybe that's the reason he was Take, selected. Takes yeah. the stress off the back three or five, or whatever yeah. you call it. So yeah, absolutely. But no, look, if obviously get more game time in him. Obviously, I want to see Shea back in between the sticks. Obviously, we like Shea, don't we? So, but look, I'm sure I'm sure Steers a good goalkeeper. I mean, I don't know too much about him. I'm sure he must be half decent. So before we get into the comments about Jed Steer from you guys, what do you think it's going to be for the next couple of games then? Because we saw Shea in that starting 11 for a while in the league and then obviously Steer come in for Cambridge. So now we would potentially see Steer against Stoke and then Shea against Chelsea, do you think? Oh, good. Yeah, Who knows? Yeah, there you go. Maybe. I, I think uh, it would be disappointing for Shea if he doesn't start against Chelsea, to be fair, uh, given all of his... Uh, contributions this season it wouldn't surprise me if Steer started Wednesday but you know we're only guessing aren't we um, but I'd like to see Shea back and go personally but he's I wouldn't done, but I wouldn't wrong. be surprised if, yeah. if well I, I agree he hasn't done much wrong at all but um, you know the manager has his reasons for putting Steer in and I would suspect that he'll play against yeah, and we have Stoke. faith we have faith in whoever's selected anyway so let's look it's not really an issue for us I don't think what do you team. think uh, um, yeah, I think he'll play Steer against Stoke and Derby and play Shea against Chelsea. Right. That's pure speculation. We'll see if it happens. Here's what you said about Jed Steer on his debut for the club. And do you see him signing permanently in the summer? Mike says, thought he was very good at catching crosses and punching away corners. Apart from that dodgy goal kick, it was a decent league debut. Neil said, thought he did okay apart from that goal kick. Made some impressive catches under pressure. And I liked his quick distribution. Which again, has been something that we've said about James Shea before in the past he's maybe not as good as other keepers we've had with distribution and stuff but Jed Steer does seem like apart from the goal kick that he yeah. you know he, he, he's got a good range of pass on him and and can relieve the pressure from some such situations especially when you've got Andy Carroll up front exactly coming that. in dealing with crosses and corners is, is vital JLV says a very good home debut debut in awful conditions for a keeper go. awful conditions there we go uh, Chris says, overcame a few early nerves and did well. Secured a clean sheet and you can't ask for more than that. I expect the management brought him in to have a close look to see if he's going to be the club's number one. Too early to say yet, but a solid start. Well, it's an interesting one though, isn't it? Because with Sluga gone and only Shea, we, we do need another keeper in the mm -hmm. summer. Yeah, and it gives that bit of competition to them both as well. Um, does he start at number one? Who knows? But I, I sort of agree with... Why, what is that, Chris? I, I think uh, I agree with what you said there. Well, I think it's good to see as well. You get a player on loan. If you can sign him permanently, and obviously in the summer, you can you know, run out in the last sort of few months of the season, then why not look at them? If you can do that and you've got the opportunity to do it, then why not? It's sensible. Rather than rushing and getting a goalkeeper and re realistically you might get him and go, that actually doesn't really fit into our system. But I mean, Jed Steer, like you say, his um, uh, distribution, sorry, looks, yeah, it looks solid. But um, and also, when was the last time we had a left footed goalkeeper as well? Mm, that's a good question. Who Marlon Berry was that. Who the foot was he? I can't remember that. Bloody hell, fair play. Maybe that's one for Twitter. If you remember the last left footed keeper we've had, are we missing anyone obvious? We had Sluger, Shea. Who do we have in the conference days? Tyler was right footed. We had Steck as well. Didn't we? Steck right -footed. was right footed. Marlon Beresford? Let us know. Twitter, Owen the Town. Last left footed goalie we had because uh, I think it's Marlon Beresford for me. The last one I remember. Um, I don't remember nothing. <laughs> Steve said he's a good keeper who, with the quality coaching Luton has, will be an excellent keeper very soon. Quality signing, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Dwayne says, Tad Ropey with distribution, got lucky on a couple of occasions, but ultimately kept a clean sheet. Can't ask for any more than that. I think we're still up there now with one of the most clean sheets kept in the, or some of the most clean sheets kept in the league, which is Surely. obviously... 
great if we're pushing for uh, playoffs. Neil says, not possible to comment in after one game, but completely baffled by James Shea being left out. I thought it'd been excellent since he got his place back a few weeks ago. Yep. But we've yeah. kind of already touched on this. You can't argue with that, can you, really? Can't argue with that. I guess at the end of the day, Nathan Jones knows best. And we have absolutely no idea the reasons why. Yeah, but you don't see what but goes on. But there's got to be a reason why. And you've got to trust Nathan Jones on that reason. You don't see what goes on in the training grounds. You don't see what the tactics are. You don't see what their research has been. And you, and, and you know, you work in the industry. You know there's lots of analytics going on. It might and there'll be, be reasons. Nathan Jones. Might have been Nathan Jones. Might be goalkeeper staff. You never know. Well, but that's ultimately Jones has got to pick the team, hasn't he? And uh, take the advice. But we just don't know the reasons. But, you know, he had a good debut. He had a good debut. And, you know, long may he keep clean sheets. But the clean sheets helped by your defence as well. James says, apart from the one that squirmed under him, I thought he had a good debut and deserved to be picked again against Stoke. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Um, yeah, great. I do think he should be be starting against Stoke. And it would just be interesting to see, when he gets to summer, will we go in for him permanently? I know there was talks about, I don't know how true they were, but talks about like Freddie Woodman, um, the former Newcastle goalkeeper. Yeah, I think yeah, he went to Bournemouth in the end. but was Swansea at one point as well, wasn't he? Maybe it was Swansea, but is it looking like we'll go for someone like Jed Steer? Or will we maybe stick Shea back in goal and go for a younger keeper that we can develop well I think that, that entirely depends on where we finish in the division you know we, we talk about this flirted with playoffs what if what if the miracle happened that's it you know then what do you do you have to reassess and then you you know you sign the best player you could sign within your budget constraints and then we keep James Shaw in the Premier League and he keeps like 15 clean <laughs> yeah, sheets but goes about <laughs> 20 million pound and yeah, extra I think, stuff there you I go. think what what the best thing about our club right now is that uh, we're, we look like we're a club on the up. We've got big plans and we will attract better players. We just will. And our management team will recruit them. And you've only got to look uh, at what Brentford have done, basically, when they've got their new stadium and they've got those players in. And, you know, they've cashed in on that. And yeah. why can't we? Well, yeah, like you say about obviously attracting players and whatever else. I think, yeah, we, I mean, I so think at the moment, currently, we're always going to attract players because obviously the way that we're coached, uh, obviously through Jones and whoever else, I think that style of football attracts people as well in itself. All right, we might be able to pay sort of like, you know, your 15, 20 grand a week or whatever for a player. But but we, we've shown in the past that we can get quality players yeah, and, then, and get them to drop down a little tad. So Yeah, but also Luton Town um, become a stepping stone for some players yeah, to move on it. up. Uh, but, you know... But I it, think that's what makes us the attractive club to sign for sometimes right. is people look at us and go... If I go to them and I've performed well, I know I've got a chance. Like mm. you, you read the comments that Drewsbury Hall said about Nathan Jones in the papers yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. And Keenan saying, he took me to a hotel off the M1 and oh, he yeah. sat down and basically said, you're going to be a Premier League player when I'm done with you. And it's just like, that's the kind of thing. He, he wasn't wrong though, was he? No, but, and that, but that's the kind of thing then other players are going to look at and go, wow, like Luton know what they're doing. And trust they will trust us with their development as players. So let's get some Instagram questions for today then to finish the podcast. James says, is Cal Naismith Premier League quality? Well, you've upset him before, so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yeah, 100% playing the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah, Cal, exactly. if you're listening, we love you now. Obviously, we can't tell how many players are Premier League quality. But how many do you reckon are? Adebayo? Yeah. It's hard to say. One or two? <laughs> it's hard to say. It's so difficult to say, isn't it? So what? how define Premier League quality? Because oh, if we went up to the Premier League, yeah, well, some, some of the Premier who League would hold their own? Yeah, yeah, but some, some players of the, some are, of the, some of the are shice, isn't they? Yeah, fairness. exactly that. Exactly I mean, that. Look at fucking Watford start 11. They're all shit. But yeah, like, realistically. Um, Campbell. Yep. There sunny. we go. We stopped sunny. already. Sunny. Sunny. There sunny. There yeah, sunny. There we go. Sunny Three. Bradley. You see, that's rubbish. That's a rubbish answer. Harry yeah, says, will Pelly that. stay at Luton his whole career? Do you think Pelly's got to a stage now where if he was going to move on, he would have already done so? You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? Is, but, he, is he enjoying it here? He's getting paid well. He's playing. Got a bit of ambition. We might get promoted. No friends, that would be the ultimate story, wouldn't it? I just Seeing had a Pelly go from the honest, to the Prem. You two are just talking now. I just thought in my head. Imagine we get to the player final and Pelly Ruddock scores the winner. Statue. Does he then become a legend? Yeah, hundred percent, mate. Hundred <laughs> percent. If we get 100%. to the playoff final, I am going to get so drunk. That's all you think about is alcohol. Isn't it? Yeah, it is at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just got to get through this, haven't I? 
But no, in all fairness, like we said about Pell, he, to be honest, even if he gets, if he gets, ever gets to the Premier League, if we get to the Premier League, he's still there with us. I think that he's just a legend anyway. So from the conference to the Premier League, that'd probably be, a, that'd be a Netflix documentary on that or something. Be outrageous, wouldn't it? <laughs> It'd like, be yeah, unreal. Surely. I mean, well, Sunderland it, it, got a it, documentary it would be a story. about getting relegated a couple of times. And, you know, I mean, we deserve one or, well. So will he end his career question. at Luton was the question. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I ju- I, and, I, and I mean this in the nicest way. I think at some point we're just going to outgrow him. And I mean that in the nicest way. I think there'll be a point at which he needs to, you know, have a check on where he is. I hope he stays because I, I like him. He's been playing really good football. Will he end his career at Luton? I don't think so. Luton Town Kit says, is Musgree good enough to start for us? I feel time on loan like Ray did will do him wonders. I didn't think he was yeah, that good. I, I didn't think he was that 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 influential. I think he look he looks good at certain points. He just goes missing a lot. Don't he? I don't think he gets involved enough. Maybe a loan spell might do him some good. Yeah, same as uh, Mendes Game as I keep saying as well. But at the moment, where he's good enough, he he might be good enough. I mean, he starts. I mean, like we say, we trust the process at Luton. We trust Nathan Jones, and he starts. But unfortunately for him, he hasn't had a lot of game time. You know, I think he's had a couple of injuries as well. But look, at the moment, no, he's probably not good enough, but he still needs to run out. I guess the question is, though, is he being, is it more beneficial for us and for him, for him to stay around and play the odd minutes for us instead of going to a lower league and playing? Like, will maybe this season in the championship getting minutes do him good so next season he can hit the ground running and go super in the championship? Well, of course. Like, but he needs minutes, though. I know he's, he's been getting minutes uh, in the last sort of couple of weeks or so, but before that, really... He weren't getting it. But I think Musco for me has to I'd throw him out wide. If you're gonna play a three up top, I think he plays in the in the right side of a three. He's good on the ball as well. I remember mm-hmm. seeing that Barnsley away game at the start of the season. I remember looking at him thinking, Wow, we got a player here. He's mm-hmm. very good on the ball, very skillful. And I think he will carry on growing. He's still a young still a young I was lad. Say, how old you, uh how old is he now? He's early twenties, isn't he? It's, it's something like that, isn't he? So that's yeah, mate. Look at Cornick as well when he first came to us and whatever else. No, he took a while, and he to get into it. Yeah, he didn't really score goals, and all of a sudden he's scoring goals again. But yeah, just give him some time. He'll be good though. He will. Good stuff. Anything to say, Dave? No, uh, no. I, I, <laughs> I, well, I just I, he hasn't over impressed me. So you know, it's a bit like when I said at the beginning of the season, I thought Campbell was a bit off his game, and then he's he's picked up. I hope Musquey does, but at the moment for me, uh, he's not quite on it, and I want him to be better than that. He has got assets, though. You can see him. Well, yeah, I'm not saying point. he hasn't I got assets. It's inconsistency and be... at the moment. And he needs minutes. But that really, is, that he overall is, he needs minutes. And you think, you know, why not go out for a little loan? Get him get him up to speed and bring him back. Why not? I, I sort of agree with Luton Town Kitsa. Because mm, he's getting minutes for us still now. Yeah, so. But he's not. He might be getting minutes for us, but he's not making... In a better league. But he's not making much of an impact with those minutes. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that, yeah, you know what? You, there's more to come. But he ain't producing it all of the time right now. That's what I'm saying. God, you're going in on players today. Well, I'm not. I'm not. Well, I just you asked my opinion. I gave it. You know, there you go. This is what happens with Dave Saber. Oh, well, what do you think of Musquey <laughs> at the moment? Do you agree with Luton Town Kids? Do you think maybe some loan time will do him good in a league below, or do you think like me that actually having him in and around the squad at the moment with minutes in the championship is more beneficial than sending him to a team in League One? I don't even think we can send him on loan, can we? His loan nah, is close anyway, but. Anyway, hypothetically, what do you think? Uh, and that's all we've got time for today. Yeah. 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 Anyone else yeah. wanted to appear on the podcast today or? Oh, yeah. I forgot, almost forgot about him. <laughs> I'll be checking on him in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, watch your headphones. Okay, if you're listening on <laughs> iTunes or Spotify, head over to YouTube to meet the newest member of Owen the Town. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here he goes. Here he is. Go on to Owen the Town's YouTube channel and, and have a look at the, the newest member. Yeah. I'm going to get a drink now. He's loving it. I'm having a drink now. He's loving it. That's Roman Harford Bataro. Roman Harford Bataro. Sing right here. And you'll probably hear him on the podcast in a good 15 years. If we're still going in 15 <laughs> years, wherever he is. Um, so we'll leave you with that thank you so much for listening today thank you so much for watching get us on twitter Owen the town on all socials enjoy the stoke game and we'll see you next week